honored is to serve as the Secretary of Health and Human Services. I'm the third physician out of 23 individuals who've had the privilege of serving as the Secretary of Health and Human Services. And the mission at our department is to improve the health and safety and well-being of the American people. And we take that mission uh, very, very seriously. Uh, and for many Americans right now, uh, their ability to gain health care or health coverage is a real challenge. Uh, for most Americans, they receive their health coverage through their employer. It's about 175 million folks. Those individuals will see no significant change other than there won't be a penalty uh, for, for uh, not purchasing coverage. Uh, for the folks in the Medicare system, there will be no changes at all in the current, uh, in, in the current law. But we're talking about those people in the individual and small group market, the, the, the moms and pops, the folks who run the corner grocery store, the corner uh, cleaners. Those individuals out there are having huge challenges gaining care and gaining coverage. And then Medicaid is a program that by and large has decreased the ability for folks to gain access to care and we want to make certain that we address that. This is about patients. This is not about money. This is not about uh, something else. This is about patients. Uh, and sadly, the costs are going up for those folks in the individual and small group market. The access is going down, and it's only getting worse. You know the stories. Premiums increased 25% over the last year on average. Arizona had an increase of 116%. Deductibles are going up for many, many folks. If you're a mom or a dad out there and you make forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, your deductible in this market, in that individual and small group market, oftentimes is eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 a year. What that means is that you've got an insurance card, but you don't get care because you can't afford the deductible. And we know that this is happening by talking to the folks who are out there trying to provide the care. A third of the counties in the United States, one third of the counties in the United States have only one insurer offering coverage on the exchange. Five states only have one insurer offering coverage on the exchange. One insurer is not a choice. So we need to make certain that we correct that. In Tennessee this morning, it was announced that there are a number of counties that have no insurer offering coverage on the exchange. Insurers are leaving the market on the exchange. Last year there were 232 insurers that were providing coverage, uh, uh, that were offering coverage on the, on the exchange. Now there are 167. That's a loss of about 30 percent in one year alone. And all of this means that patients are not getting the care that they need. Now the principles that we have as our, as our guiding star uh, are affordability. We want a system that's affordable for everybody. Accessibility, we need a system that's accessible for everybody, a system that's of the highest quality, a system that incentivizes innovation in the healthcare system, and a system that empowers patients through both transparency and accountability. The President spoke last week, last Tuesday, to a joint session of Congress, and he laid out his, his principles. Uh, first, wanted to make certain that those with pre-existing illness and injury uh, were not priced out of the market. Nobody ought to lose their coverage because they get a bad diagnosis. In terms of affordability, health savings accounts, gro growing choices for, for patients is incredibly important. Uh, tax credits uh, that allow individuals to be able to purchase the kind of coverage that they want, not that the government forces them to buy. We've always talked about uh, uh, in, in terms of what kinds of reforms need to be put in place that we need to equalize the tax treatment for the purchase of coverage. Those, again, in the, in, in the employer-sponsored market, they get a tax benefit for buying health coverage. Those folks that are out there in the individual and small group market, no tax benefit. And that's what this plan would do. State flexibility. It's incredibly important that we allow the states to be the ones that are defining what health coverage is, have the flexibility, especially in the Medicaid program, to be able to respond to their vulnerable population. Uh, lawsuit abuse, the President mentioned, and it's incredibly important. The practice of defensive medicine wastes billions and billions of dollars every single year, and we need to make certain that we're addressing that as well. The uh, President also talked about a, a glide path, an appropriate transition to this new, uh, new, uh, new phase uh, for health care for our country. And that's important as well so that nobody falls through the cracks. Uh, buying across state lines, uh, buying insurance across state lines, the President talked about this uh, on the campaign over and over. American people understand the common sense nature of purchasing across state lines, and it increases competition. And we need to make certain that that happens, and then addressing uh, the incredible increase in drug prices. Um, there are three phases of this plan. One is the bill that was introduced uh, uh, last evening uh, in the House of Representatives. That's the, the start of all of this. Second are the, all the regulatory modifications and changes that can be put into place. As you all well know, the previous administration used regulations to a fairly well. 
In fact, there were 192 specific rules that were put out as they relate to Obamacare, over 5,000 letters of guidance uh, uh, and the like. And we are going to go through every single one of those and make certain that they, if they help patients, then we need to continue them. If they harm patients or, or increase costs, uh, then obviously they need to be addressed. Uh, and then there's other legislation that will need to be addressed that can't be done through the reconciliation process. So the goal of all of this is patient-centered health care, where patients and families and doctors are making medical decisions and not the federal government. Uh, we, look, we commend the House for the introduction of the bill yesterday, and we look forward to working uh, with all individuals in this process. And I look forward to a few questions. Yes, sir. Secretary, Secretary, you're familiar from your time in the House with the clout that conservative groups like the uh, Club for Growth and Heritage Action have with rank and file members. What does it say about this legislation uh, that these groups are already uh, out with opposition to, to it? Well, I think that, it, that this is the beginning of the process, uh, and, and we look forward to working with them and, and others to make certain that, again, we come up with that process that aligns with the principles uh, that we've defined, uh, that they actually uh, uh, adhere to or agree uh, with as well, and that is that we need a system that's affordable for folks, a system that is, that's accessible for individuals, that's of the highest quality, that incentivizes innovation, uh, and that empowers patients. Uh, and so we look forward to working with them through this process. Yes, Chaffet said today that Americans may have to forego a new iPhone to pay for health care and they'll have to kind of make these choices. Uh, does the administration agree with that? Will Americans under this plan, will they need to maybe sacrifice other goods to pay for their health care? This is an important question because what's happening right now is that the American people are having to sacrifice in order to purchase coverage. And as I mentioned, many individuals can't afford the, the, the kind of coverage that they have right now. So they've got that insurance card, but they don't have care. Uh, what, what our desire is, is, is to drive down the health care costs for everybody. Uh, and the way that you do that is to increase choices for folks, increase competition, uh, return the regulation of health care where it ought to be, which is at the state level, not at, at the federal level. Uh, all of these things that, that uh, are taken in their aggregate uh, will, in fact, decrease the cost of health uh, care and health coverage, uh, and that will allow folks to be able to purchase the coverage that they want. Yes, sir. Price. I have uh, two questions for you. The first has to do with uh, guarantees that you can make as the administration's point person on this legislation. Can you guarantee that whatever legislation emerges and makes it to the president's desk uh, will allow individuals, if they like their doctor, they can keep their doctor? And the second guarantee is, can you also guarantee that health care premiums for individuals will come down with this new legislation? Again, a remarkably important question because, as you'll recall, the promise from the last administration was if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your plan, you can keep your plan. Both of those promises turned out to be not true. Uh, we think it's incredibly important for the American people to be able to select the physician and the place where they're treated uh, in th themselves, that, that the government ought not be involved in, in that process. Uh, and so our goal is to absolutely to make certain that individuals have the opportunity to select their physician. In terms of, uh, of premiums, uh, we, we believe strongly that through this whole process and as it takes effect uh, that we'll see a decrease in not only the, the, the premiums that individuals will see, uh, but a decrease in the cost of health care for folks. Remember that, this, that was another promise that the, that the previous administration made, that, that you'd see a decrease in $2,500 on average uh, for families across this land. In fact, what they've seen is an increase of $2,500 or $3,000. So we're going to go in the other direction. We're going to go in a direction that empowers patients and holds down costs. Mr. Yes. Mr. Secretary, uh, you, you are quite a distance away uh, from conservatives with this plan in the central part of it, which is tax credits, which they see as yet another entitlement, very similar to the entitlement of Obamacare. They're different in form. Yet how do you convince them, since it's going to take tax credits to make this work, that they need to swallow this and and move forward with the bill? I mean, you're getting yeah. an awful lot of opposition on this central tenet of this whole thing. Yeah, remember, this is all about patients. Uh, and in order to provide that transition and in order to make it so that nobody falls through the cracks, we've got to have a system that allows for individuals to gain the kind of coverage that, that they want. And we, conservatives and, and, and uh, others, have said for a long, long time that we believe it's important to equalize the tax treatment for those purchasing coverage, gaining coverage through their employer, and those not. And the tax credit is the opportunity to be able to equalize that tax treatment. 
Uh, folks have talked about this for, for, uh, for many, uh, many years, actually, so that there's not a distortion in the tax code for who's able to gain a, a, a benefit for being able to purchase coverage and not. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, Secretary, um, you were talking about making sure people don't fall through the cracks. The last administration with Obamacare focused in on making sure the underserved uh, were part of the equation. What is the safety net or the safeguard that you have to make sure to ensure people don't fall through the cracks beyond the tax incentives, but also for the underserved who are now part of, many are now part of the program that weren't before or prior to Yeah, this is, this is uh, extremely important as well, and, it's, and, and the, the current system, as you likely know, uh, for those vulnerable in our population, especially in the Medicaid population, this is a system that's, that's broken. You've got a third of the physicians in this country, one third of the doctors in this country that would be eligible to see Medicaid patients who aren't seeing Medicaid patients right now. And it's not because they've forgotten how to take care of patients, it's because of the rules that are in place that make it too onerous or too difficult for them to see Medicaid patients. So we believe that it's important to allow states to have that flexibility to fashion the program for their vulnerable population that actually responds to that population in a way that gives them the authority, them the choices, them the opportunity to gain coverage and the care that they believe most appropriate. That, that is not happening when you give it to the states. Is there some type of punishment or some type of uh, piece that you're going to put in place to make sure that that happens, that they follow through on your intent? Yeah, there's uh, absolutely. There's accountability throughout the, uh, uh, the, the plan that we have that would uh, allow for the Secretary and the Department to be certain that the individuals that we believe uh, need to be cared for are being cared for in, at, in the state at the appropriate, uh, at the appropriate level. Uh, but we believe this is a partnership. This is about patience and partnership. The previous administration tended to make it about government. We believe it's about patience and partnership, and we want to partner with every single person in this land who wants to make certain that we allow the kind of choices and quality to exist. Yes, ma'am. The, um, the President tweeted earlier today, he described this bill as our wonderful new health care bill. There's been a little bit of confusion. Does this represent the administration's bill? And is there anything in this bill that the administration cannot support? This has been a, a work in progress. As you know, this has been going on for over, over a year. Uh, the work that, uh, that I had the privilege of, uh, of uh, participating in when I served in the House of Representatives in the last Congress uh, was, was open and, and transparent, and uh, we, we, we invited folks in uh, to, uh, to give their ideas, and uh, tens if not hundreds of people had input into that process. This grew out of that, and over the past number of weeks we've been having conversations with, uh, with folks uh, on the Hill uh, in the House and in the Senate uh, and other stakeholders. And so this is a work product that is a, a result of all of that, all of that process. The president and, and, and the administration support this step in the right, what we believe is in, in the right direction, uh, a step that repeals uh, Obamacare and gets us moving in the direction of those principles that I outlined. Do you support everything yeah. that's in that bill that's sitting on the table, sir? Do you support everything that's in the bill sitting on the table, sir? Well, this is a work in progress, and we work, we'll work with the House uh, and the Senate in this process. As you know, it's a legislative process that occurs. I'm glad you pointed out the, 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 the bills on the table there. As, you, as you'll see, this bill right here was the bill that was, was introduced um, in, in 2009 and 10 by the previous administration. Notice how thick that is. Some of you will recall that I actually turned the pages and went through that piece of legislation in a YouTube. The bill on the, the, the pile on the right uh, uh, is, is the current bill. Uh, and what it, what it means is that we're, we are uh, making certain that the process, that the decisions that are going to be made are not going to be made by the federal government. They're going to be made by patients and families and doctors. Mr. One last. Secretary, given the opposition that John and others have brought up here today, uh, does this plan already need to be salvaged in your view, and how do you do it? Oh, no. Wait, this, you know what, what happens with these things. You start, uh, you start at a starting point. People engage and they get involved in the process, uh, uh, sometimes to a greater degree. Nothing focuses the mind like a bill that's uh, currently on the table and, and that has, uh, has, a, has a work in progress uh, or in process, and, and uh, we'll, we'll work through it. This, 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 is, this, is in, this is an important process to be had. The American people have said to their elected leaders that the, the, the Obamacare process for them gaining coverage and care is not working. That's what they've said. And so we believe it's important to respond to the American people and provide a health care system that allows for them to purchase the kind of coverage and care that they desire. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you said in your letter to the House Chairman uh, that necessary technical and appropriate changes might need to be made for this bill to reach the President's desk. So 
what specific changes is the White House and the administration looking for in this bill? Well, as I mentioned, there are three different phases to this process. One is this bill, this legislation that's working through under the rules of reconciliation, which is a fancy term to mean that, it, that it, uh, there are only certain things that you can do from a budgetary standpoint has to affect either spending or, or, or revenue. Uh, there are things that you can't do in this bill, and those we plan on doing in, in, uh, in, in, across the horizon in phase two, which is the regulatory portion, and then in phase three, which is another piece of legislation that, that uh, would be going through the House and the Senate uh, uh, with, a, with a majority, supermajority uh, in the Senate. That process will, will incorporate all of the kinds of things that we believe are absolutely necessary to reconstitute that individual and small group market and to get us in a position, again, where patients and families and docs are making in these decisions. Secretary, Secretary, bearing in mind that the CBO score is yet yet, can you guarantee that this plan will not have a markedly negative impact on the deficit or result in millions of Americans losing health insurance? Uh, what, what I can say is that the goal and the desire I know of the individuals on the, on the Hill is to make certain that this does not increase the cost to the federal government. Secretary, two, yeah. elements, two elements of the bill. Uh, I have questions about how they control costs and how they help with access the Medicaid uh, per capita block grant to the states. Uh, how is that sort of fundamentally different uh, from the Obamacare regime on Medicaid in terms of expanding access? And then the second point, why doesn't this bill uh, uh, do away with the cost sharing community ratings uh, uh, regime that Obamacare has? Uh, to the per capita cap, the Medicaid again is a, is a system that doesn't work for patients. You got, you got folks out there who need care, who need to see particular physicians, who aren't able to see them. The, the, all Americans should be a, a saddened by the situation that, that, that we have when, you, when there are patients out there that can't get the care that they need. We believe one of the keys to, to providing appropriate care in the Medicaid population is, is uh, allowing the states to have the flexibility to address that Medicaid population. Remember, Medicaid population is four, di four different v demographic groups. It's those who are disabled, it's those who are seniors, it's healthy moms and kids by and large. Those are the four main demographic groups. And, and we, the federal government, force states mostly to take care of those individuals in exactly the same way. If, if you describe that to the folks back home on Main Street, they say that doesn't make any sense at all. You need a program that's different for the, for the healthy moms and kids to respond to their needs that's different than, the, than folks who are disabled and, and, and seniors. And so what we believe is appropriate is to say to the states, you know your population best. You know best how to care for your vulnerable, vulnerable population. We're going to watch you and make certain that you do so, but you know how to do that. And that will decrease costs markedly in, 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 in the Medicaid program. We're wasting significant amounts of money. Not that folks are getting too much care. We're wasting it because it's inefficient and there's significant uh, um, uh, abuse in the system. So uh, in terms of, of, of the cost sharing, I think that the cost sharing measures are, are being addressed. It's important that we, that we run through that process. This is the, uh, uh, the process where we felt the previous administration was spending money uh, that they didn't have the authority to spend, and Congress is working through that to make certain that the rightful uh, holders of uh, the authority to spend money in this nation, which is the is the Congress of the United States, uh, exercises that authority. Mr. Secretary, yeah. how does the White House and you feel about the label Trump Care? Oh, I'll let others uh, pro provide a description for it. I prefer to call it patient care. This is about this is about patients. At the end of the day, this isn't about politicians. This isn't about insurance companies. This is about patients. And patients in this nation, the, especially those in the individual and small group market, these are the folks. I had the privilege of going to Cincinnati last week with the vice president to a, to a small business roundtable. And one of, the, one of the business owners, one of the small business owners there, said he had 18 employees last year at this time. This year he has 15 employees. Not because he doesn't have the work, but because of the cost of health coverage for those individuals forced him, forced him to let three people go. Now, they're being forced to let three people go because the federal government has put in place rules and regulations that make it virtually impossible for folks in the individual and small group market to provide coverage for their employees. This is a system that's not working for people. So if, you, if, if, you, if we focus on the patients, I'll call it patient care. If you focus on the patients, we'll get to the right answer. A major complaint of concern, sorry. A major complaint of conservatives with phase one of the Obamacare repeal and replace is that it is missing a measure that would uh, allow health care to be sold across state mm. lines. Now, the president said this morning that that would be in either phase two or phase three. Is that something 
that you believe the president could do through executive action and then you yourself could do? Or is that something that you believe has to be addressed legislatively? There, there, there are different a aspects to the purchase across state lines that will allow individuals to gain, again, the kind of choices that they want. Um, th some of this might be able to be done uh, from a regulatory or a rule standpoint. Um, some of it will require uh, legislation, and that's where we're, where, uh, we're going to need uh, uh, the assistance of our friends on the other side of the aisle. The American people have demanded that they be able to purchase coverage across state lines, purchase coverage that they want for themselves. So whether it's through association health plans, which allows individuals who are in small business groups, like the fellow that I just mentioned, to pool together nationally to be able to purchase coverage, or whether it's uh, 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 mom and dad uh, who, who don't gain coverage through their employer. Uh, through something called individual health pools that allows folks to pool together solely for the purpose of purchasing coverage even though they're not otherwise economically aligned. Uh, that, that allows people, 18, there are 18 million folks in that individual and small group market, that would allow those individuals to be able to purchase coverage and get the purchasing power of millions. That's, that's huge power and authority that we want to put in the hands of people, that we want to put in the hands of patients. And some of that may, in fact, require legislation. Yes, sir. Mr. Secretary, uh, thank you. Uh, two questions, but first, Congressman John Faso of New York has said that the issue of denying federal funds to Planned Parenthood should be separate <laughs> from whatever health care bill finally emerges from Congress and is signed into law by the President. Is that the administration's position as well? And my second question is this. You mentioned earlier the people who had their health care plans canceled when they thought they could keep it. I believe in your state of Georgia, more than a million people had that experience. Will some of the plans that were canceled be able to come back under the new health care plan? Yeah, in terms of, of, of uh, Planned Parenthood, we, we think it's important that the legislature work its, work its will on this process. Uh, it's incredibly important that, that we not violate anybody's conscience. Uh, we want to protect the conscience provisions that, uh, that exist. It's also important to appreciate that through community health centers, the bill that's being proposed right now would allow greater access for women to health care in greater numbers of facilities across this, this uh, land. And they've actually proposed more money for, for women's health care than, than currently exists. So I think that they're, they're working their best to, uh, to address that issue. In terms of whether or not old plans that, that were available before uh, might, might be available, um, absolutely. And we believe that, that, it, that the, the, uh, the opportunity to provide a robust uh, um, market, uh, robust choices for individuals across this land will be secured. And again, that's one of the keys to bringing down the premium costs of bringing down the cost for health coverage. So we're excited about that and look forward to that uh, uh, coming to pass. Mr. Yeah. If the new plan calls for repealing the revenue generating taxes and penalties, but keeping the entitlements, how is that sustainable? Uh, well, that, that's the, the work that somebody mentioned over here, the, the Congressional Budget Office score. And, and once, they, once the Congress receives that score, then they'll be working through that to make certain that, in fact, uh, it, it is fiscally responsible. Uh, imagine, if you would, however, a system where, we're, where the, the, the incentives within the system are all to drive down costs, to provide greater choices and competition for folks and respond to the specific needs of, of patients. And in so doing, what you do is actually get a much more efficient system for the provision and the delivery of, of, of health care. It's a system we don't have right now because the previous administration felt that the government ought, federal government ought to do all of this. And we've seen what, what, what came about when the federal government does all of that. That is, increasing premiums, increasing deduct deductibles, decreasing choices. You got a card that says you've got insurance and you walk in and you can't afford what it is uh, uh, that, that, uh, that's trying to, for the doctor that's trying to take care of you. So this is not a system that's working for folks in that individual and small group market and in the exchanges. Mr. Secretary, many have complained that Obamacare resulted in higher wait times in the emergency room. Will this new bill cause that? Have you have any idea on that? One of the things that, that, uh, that uh, the previous administration said was that they were going to be able to drive folks away from one of the most expensive areas for, for the provision of health care, and that is the emergency rooms. In fact, they did just the opposite. Um, and, and much of that is because of, again, the rules and the regulations that they put in place. So if, from our perspective, we, we believe that if, you, if, if individuals are able to purchase the kind of coverage that they want, then they'll have access to the kind of doctors and other providers that, that, that they desire and won't need to be able to be seen in the emergency room. They'll already have that, the, the, the care. Emergency rooms ought to be for emergencies. 
not for the standard care that individuals uh, tend to receive right now. So we believe that if you put in place the right system, then emergency rooms and the emergency physicians will be able to have the opportunity to care for those individuals that appropriately present to their department. Mr. Secretary, I'm interested in following up on your comment that it's important that no one uh, vote on anything that violates their conscience. Um, federal funding already can't be used for abortions, but are you saying the administration has a position on provision of birth control at these community health centers? And secondly, um, is the administration looking to actively uh, withhold <coughs> funding to Planned Parenthood if they co continue to provide abortions? as has been reported. Yeah, we're working through all of those issues. Uh, as you know, many of those were through the rulemaking process, and, and, and we're working through that. So that's not a part of this piece of legislation uh, right here. Do have a view on provision of birth control and access to it when you're talking about women's health care, which you brought up, and saying you wanted to expand more community funding? Yeah, what, what, what we're doing, as I say, is working through the rules and the regulations to see where the previous administration was, see how they did it, and whether or not it needs to be addressed, with the understanding that what we believe is important when we look at the rules and regulations is to define whether or not the rule, that rule or regulation actually helps patients or, uh, or, or, uh, and decreases costs or harms patients and increases costs. If it does the latter, then we need to do away with it. If it does the former, then we ought to accentuate it. What was the it. issue of conscience you were talking about? What was the issue of conscience you were talking about then? To make certain that individuals in, in, uh, in the market uh, are not forced to do things that violate their conscience. Yes, sir. Secretary, thank you, sir. Common people and the small businesses have been waiting for this <coughs> new bill uh, under President Trump. So any message, sir, for them? Well, I, I think that, that this is the culmination of, of uh, years of work. Um, it's the culmination of years of concern and, and frustration by the American people. Uh, they knew at the time that the, that the previous bill, uh, the previous law passed that it wasn't going to help them. They knew that, that, uh, uh, that, that, uh, that costs were going to go up. In fact, we predicted uh, at the time that costs would go up and that access uh, uh, would, would go down. Uh, and so this is the culmination of years of, of, of hard work by the electorate, by the citizens of this country, uh, to say that we want a system, again, that respects patients and families and doctors in these decisions. Thank you, One more? Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Um, the President tweeted out earlier today that he believes that he's working on a plan to uh, have drug prices come down by uh, spurring competition. Can you tell us a little bit about what that plan is going to be, when it might be rolled out as a part of these phases. And then the second question, um, the bill also includes a tax break for uh, insurance exec executives that make more than $500,000. You said this is about patients. Why is that tax break important for this legislation? To the latter, I'm not, I'm not, not aware of that. I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. Drug pricing is really important. Um, so many individuals are now uh, having s significant difficulty uh, being able to afford the medications that they've been, they've been prescribed. Uh, so we, it, it, whether it's, it, and it's not able to be addressed specifically in, in, the, uh, in, in this phase one because it's not a revenue or a spending issue for the federal government. Uh, so uh, uh, it, it, it can't be in this phase one. But in phase two and three, uh, which may be concurrent uh, uh, in, along with this phase one, but uh, in phase two and three, then we look forward to bringing uh, solutions to solve the remarkable challenge that patients have across this land with the, with the uh, increasing price of, of drugs. I've got to run. You've got a guy right here who's going to answer all the rest of the questions. Thank you so much. God bless you.